To quote the award-winning Sydney-based illustrator Christopher Nielsen, color makes the world go round. It's hard to deny the impact of colors in our everyday lives. And nothing makes that quote more justified than the one name that stands throughout history as the master hue, shade, and tint. And the name is Pantone. With over 10 million designers and producers around the world relying on Pantone's products and services in order to help define, communicate, and control color, Pantone has been actively turning inspiration into realization. Imagine living in a world where the vibrant red on a drink packaging turns out a dull orange in reality, which was the norm till Pantone revolutionized the color consistency. Pantone's dream was not to sell color, painting, or its accessories, or in fact anything to do with color machinery. Pantone's USP was to sell the idea of how the same color printed on a billboard turns out different when it goes into the poster, hanging on the wall of the store of the same brand. Kodak is one such example, where color confusion in two different boxes gets tangible and creates perplexity. Both are supposed to be the same color. One with the darker yellow gives a feeling of old boxes, whereas the lighter yellow should have given a new box feeling. But in reality, they were supposed to be the same. But due to them being manufactured in two different factories, colors are formulated differently. This is what leads to the creation of Pantone, a company that wants to give you consistency in color, ensuring your brand message conveys the same tone and vibe across all platforms. Today, we delve deeper into the story of Pantone and try to understand how it turned the complexity of colors into their greatest asset, coloring our world in a spectrum of shades that speak to emotions, trends, and different identities. The colorful legacy of Pantone begins with a man called Lawrence Herbert, a chemistry graduate first identifying how printing differs from company to company for making the same color. But before that, a small history lesson. You see, brothers Mervyn and Jesse Levine founded the commercial printing company M and J Levine Advertising way back in the 1950s, and they decided to hire Lawrence Herbert, a recent university graduate who had a talent for chemistry. Fast forward to 1962, the company fell into $50,000 debt, and that's when Herbert bought the company's tech assets for $90,000, renaming the company to Pantone, and established itself as the graphics art industry standard for color specification, extending its library of colors to 747 colors. His mission to change the way we perceive colors materialized as the Pantone matching system was introduced in 1963. PMS was a pioneering approach to color standardization that promised consistency and reliability across the design, manufacturing, and creative landscapes. Along with a dedicated team, he pitched the idea and formulation of the PMS, which as a result transformed the entire approach to color from an industrial perspective. In the 80s, Pantone licensed proprietary software to manufacturers for desktop publishing, later adopted by Adobe Systems Inc., Hewlett Packard Company, Xerox Corporation, Microsoft, Canon, and a bunch more leading digital solution providers. In 86, Pantone established the Pantone Color Institute, which helped designers and brands to properly harness the power of color itself. With designer colors slowly on the rise, Pantone increased its color palettes with metallics, pastels, and a process color system of 3,000 colors in 1987. 1999 was the year Pantone decided to make a trend out of color, announcing the first ever color of the year, 15, 4,020 cerulean. However, the journey of innovation and acclaim did not stop there, as Pantone was again acquired by x rite in 2007 for a whopping $180 million, later incorporated into Danaher Corporation in 2012, and eventually Veralto, further solidifying its position as the global color authority. Regardless of the transition and changes, Pantone maintained their core objective, which was to bring clarity and consistency to the world of color. Pantone's color language currently supports all forms of industries that work with the concept of color. The list of industries includes, but is not exhaustive, to textiles, apparel, beauty, interiors, architectural, and industrial designs, while covering over 10,000 color standards across an impressive number of materials. In an interview with Ellie Chung regarding the process, this is what she had to say. 
So no one actually owns color. What we have is a, the IP of the Pantone color system, which is a collection of colors that we have selected for its not just its beauty, but its reproducibility across different formats. Take Coca-Cola, for example, the world-famous beverage company with that signature Coca-Cola Red had a few issues with the overall sales due to the differences in color in different regions. There was a stereotype that the matte-colored cans were the original ones, while the glossier ones would be considered counterfeit, which wasn't the case. In reality, different regions had a different understanding of the shade of red, hence the confusion. This is where Pantone shone through, as by acquiring the color to their name and labeling it PMS 484, every unit can be manufactured using the same color, and things became a lot easier. Ellie Chung had this to say regarding the process. Um, a color in mind that they want to make sure that can be reproduced across different materials that they may be presented color, whether it could be from uh, their clothing line all the way to the storefront, all the way to the internet representation on the website. Since standardization is what all brands are after to keep their color consistency intact, the PMS ensures color identification and matching, so any brand can produce its color across any platform. Let's say Peach Fuzz is the color of the year of Pantone for 2024, and to reproduce it with consistency, the PMS assigns a unique code for that color. Then comes the color formulation, in which Pantone creates color guides and formula books with a slew of colors. For example, to create a yellow color for the Kodak packaging, the formula book states which colors or ink to be stirred together to create the desired yellow. To measure its viability and accuracy, tools like spectrophotometers are used to carry out the due diligence of the color across various packaging of Kodak across all of Europe or the US. But that's not all. In fact, Pantone offers consulting services as well as licensing to companies looking to license any specific color that will be only patented to them. One such example was Universal Studio approaching Pantone for making banana yellow for their 2015 Minion film. According to Ellie Chung, about half of our revenue comes from the physical guides that we have, because there are so many different formats of it. With approximately $29 million of revenue and more or less 200 employees working right now, you may have one question pestering around. How does a company work that plan on advertising products using its brand color identity and how to monetize the concept of color in general? The answer, FreshBooks. You see, Pantone updates their FreshBook every year with new colors being added there alongside the existing ones. The rationale is these colors can be exposed to air and can oxidize, deteriorating, and fading the actual color grade. If a company wants to create a poster to run an ad campaign based on FreshBook, it may or may not look exactly as it does in the book. Therefore, having a FreshBook printed every year is of utmost importance, and selling these color guidebooks and FreshBooks to designers, marketers, and artists generates a handsome revenue for the company. With Pantone's financial palette being more enriched than just these guides, they also have consulting services and licensing agreements that form a significant revenue stream, offering brands the chance to claim a unique color as their very own. This level of exclusivity acts a lot like a trademark and becomes a part of the brand's identity in the process. Through the Pantone Color Institute, they don't only trademark colors, but set the colors as a trend. Half of our revenue comes from the uh, physical uh, guides that we have because there are so many different formats of it. We want to make sure that our community of creatives and designers you know, have a conversation about color every year, uh, at least once a year. In 2024, Peach Fuzz was Pantone's color of the year, a color that represented themes of nurturing, connection, and the rejuvenation of the body, mind, and soul. However, Pantone has been selecting their color of the year ever since 2000. Here's a list of all the colors that have been given the title in chronological order. Pantone stands at the forefront of innovation, and as we navigate through the ever-changing landscape of the digital age, they manage to seamlessly integrate traditional color selection and the field of digital design. The pioneering spirit ensures that the colors that define our lives, the colors we adorn ourselves with, decorate our spaces, and see on our screens maintain the right amount of vibrancy, consistency, 
and of course, their identity. Remember, there's always room for more color.